Hello, my name is Louise, and this is the Adventures with Yarn podcast, where I talk about mainly knitting and crochet, and I may occasionally talk about some other crafts as well. If you are a subscriber, thank you, and welcome back. If you are a new viewer, welcome, and I'm glad that you have taken the time to check this out. All right, I hope that you guys have had a great week and a great weekend. Um, I am posting weekly videos and my goal is to have them out on Mondays. And I know that Monday is not always a day of the week that people are very excited about, but hopefully I can give you just a little bit of joy as we talk about crafting on your Monday. Okay, so I don't quite have any finished objects that I've made this week. Um, a lot of works in progress. Which shall we start with? Well, we have here the square that I was knitting for the Mystery Cal 12 Blocks for Christmas. I actually have not worked on this at all since my last podcast. Um, I've been doing a bit of what we call monogamous knitting this week where I've only been knitting on one project really and it was not this. Um, this project I think is going to get put on the back burner. Um, it's just not as intriguing to me as a project should be right now. Um, I think that I can focus on getting a lot more progress on other smaller projects. Um, the, the goal of this was to be knitting a square every week or so and it's taken me, I mean this is how much work I've got done in like two weeks. It does have its very very cute grilled cheese place uh, stitch, stitch marker, progress keeper. Um, it is super cute. I think I'll leave this here. I may work on this again um, after Christmas or maybe sometime next year after I make all the Christmas presents I want or maybe I'll just slowly work on it again here and there. Um, there's supposed to be several other different blocks and they will all be um, sewn together to make a blanket and my goal was to make this blanket for my husband. Lots of blacks and grays. Um, and to use up those darker colors that are in my stash. But I think that we're just going to hold off on this one for a while. Um, really, if a knitting project isn't bringing you the joy um, and fulfillment that it should while you're making it, then, um, you know, life's too short. Make something else. Do what makes you happy. So, what has been making me happy, my project that I've been knitting on all week, is in my super cute crochet toot tote. In my crochet tote. Oh my gosh. Um, I love this. Weekend plans crochet with a chance of movie marathons. Yes. Um, it's more so been like Netflix binging rather than movie marathons, but that is an ideal weekend for me. So what I've been working on is my night shift cowl or shawl, whichever you want to call it. Um, at first I thought that the colors that I um, chose were way too bright and out there, but as things have progressed, I've been very happy with how this has been turning out. So here we go. Show this in all of its glory. I've made quite a bit of progress. I think last week I was like around this area maybe. And now you can see we have shifted through some other patterns and colors. And I really like how like um, some of these colors of yarn that I've chosen kind of fade into different colors. Uh, as they're variegated and so you can see like the background kind of changes from light to darker green and up here it's more of a, a lightish blue and um, and then on to a darker blue. Uh, this change right here might be a little dramatic but the um, yarn for the little dots fades. Um, and I only have about two more 
what I'm calling sections. Each section for me, I have my background color with two different sections of the um, colored spots. So the colored spots, they start small for five rows, get a little bit larger, and so you can see right here, they start little spots and then onto the darker ones. So each repetition of small and big is one section, and I am having the background color span two different colors of the spotted sections before going on and on and on. So basically, have a little bit more ways to go, and as it gets longer, it also gets wider. Um, it's an asymmetrical triangle, and there is a increase on every right side, which by the way, there is a right side and a wrong side. Um, and this is going to be given as a gift to somebody, and so I hope that I can convey that, the right side and the wrong side. I feel like sometimes um, when you give gifts to somebody, they don't quite always understand that, or they don't quite understand that like the seam of a hat needs to go in the back. And oh my gosh, as I was showing this, some stitches just came off. We can not have that. Boo, bogus. Okay, yeah, but uh, like I was saying earlier too, it's become so wide, it doesn't quite fit on my circulars. Um, these circular needles are not like super, super long. Um, maybe just like 16 inches or something. Uh, but I think we um, fixed it all as well. We picked up those stitches. Um, but basically, yeah, I hope that the person I give this to won't end up like wearing this on the wrong side or the wrong side end up showing too much. Um, sometimes that can happen. So this is the Night Shift Shawl. This is by Andrea Mowry, and it has been so much fun seeing all the different color combos other people are doing um, with the same pattern, the same shawl. I know I watched the uh, Chelsea Pearls um, podcast this last week, and I think her name's Christina, um, was wearing her version, their shop's version of the Night Shift Shawl in um, different colors. I think they were the colors from their own shop, which is really cool. Um, it's it's just been really super cool seeing all the different kinds of colors that people use. And I definitely think that I wouldn't mind making another one of these for someone else, or maybe even for myself. Oh, imagine that. Because um, this is a really fun pattern and a really fun repeats and watching the colors shift and change like it's been a lot of fun and then of course there's also my little stitch marker a little piece of pumpkin pie i'm really hoping to finish this by thanksgiving and like i may have mentioned before the recipient that i'm giving this to i am very grateful for her help and advice in my life she's a very bright and bold person and i think that these colors these bold sparkly out there colors will just be great and I don't think that she is the type of person that would be afraid to be wearing something like this so that is my progress on the night shift shawl okay so that was pretty much all I've really been knitting on this last week um, I did want to show you a work in progress that has been off of my needles for a while um if you've watched my previous podcast you've heard me mention my dear sweet new baby niece baby Liviana. um i wanted to make her a little baby sweater it's not finished yet um this is what i have so far uh, and that you can see that this sleeve is still on the needles. I think I got this all the way up to where I would next need to just change to a smaller set of needles, which I do have. Um, I was making this for her, and I think this size is like three to six months, I'm fairly sure, or maybe it's zero to three months. Um, and she is coming up on three months, so I still have time. I just got a little discouraged when I was making this. Um, if you've seen my first podcast, I kind of talk about 
um, a time in the not so distant past where I got kind of feeling down and depressed um, and so much so that I wasn't knitting or crafting like anything. I was just kind of like a slog, just kind of laying around. Um, didn't really want to do any crafting. I knew, um, eventually I knew that if I wanted to cheer up, that I just needed some inspiration. And I thought, well, let's see what's on YouTube. Like, I don't really know what would be on YouTube as far as knitting and crochet, but let's just see what there is. And little did I know that there are plenty of wonderful people out there who do these knitting podcasts just like this. And I found one by Celeste Full called Yarn to Table, and it was really inspiring. And I like to say it got me back on the needles, um, so to say. Got me crafting again. And once I was crafting again, it just gave me more joy in life, more things to look forward to, to plan projects, to do, and um, I knew that once I could just get that rolling, you know, the rest would take care of itself. Um, but yes, this particular project was the last one that I was working on until my little hiatus from crafting. Um, my family lives in California and I started realizing that this baby girl hardly wears actual clothes to begin with because it's so warm down there. Even in the fall, it's just kind of warm enough in their house that she just kind of chills around in her little onesie or you know just a diaper and I thought oh my gosh I'm making this sweater she's not even gonna like actually wear it um but I think that she'll still have some time to fit into this if I give it to her right before Christmas and she's a pretty small baby um so I'm thinking I really want to start working on this again. So I have made a couple of baby sweaters and cardigans. Oh great, another needle falling off. Live stitches, oh gosh. I'll have to pick those up in a bit. I think we'll be all right. I'm just gonna set that down. Uh, so I just try not to cause any further damage. Um, Anyways, I have previously made other baby sweaters. I did want to show one that I have previously made in the past. This is actually the exact same pattern, and but it's finished. This one I actually made and wanted to keep for myself. I hope to have children in the future, and um, they just don't exist yet, but they will have a few knitted things from me, so this is some cotton yarn, just like the other one um, that I previously showed you. This is, um, I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby, which is so far my favorite cotton to make these little baby garments out of. And if you can see, I have um, some tortoise shell buttons on here. And I, what I really like about this color is it could go either way. Like this would be really cute on a little boy or a little girl. Um, just put a little, I'd put like a little white bow in her hair or, you know, and you've got, you know, or maybe some like little pink leggings or something with this and it could totally work for a little girl too. So this is what the previous baby sweater is supposed to end up being like and hopefully I will get the gumption to finish it so that um, it can be done and I can give it to baby Oliviana. I mean, worst case scenario, if, um, if I don't, then I'll just keep it, add it to my little collection anyways. So, okay, those are what I have been knitting on. And on to the next segment, which will be our stash acquisitions. Um, I really, really am trying to hold off on buying so much yarn and work on the stash that I do have already existing. Um, but you guys, it's really hard to do. It's really hard to do when there is so much wonderful, wonderful yarn out there. Um, if you have not heard of Dunder Knit, um, you should go check her out because she is amazing and hilarious and entertaining. But she is also doing a Dunder Knit Along. Um, her podcast is called Knitting Vicariously, but this knit-along is kind of like the opposite. It's like actually 
knitting instead of just hoping and wishing vicariously. It is all about doing what makes you happy and just forget about any other obligation knitting or anything like that. So just casting on what makes you happy. Um, so I have decided to spend quite a bit of money on yarn that I'm still waiting to arrive from England. And I will show you that when it gets here. I cannot wait. But in the meantime, I was with some family and we went down to Ashland, Oregon, which um, if I haven't mentioned already, I live in the state of Oregon but about four hours north of Ashland. Um, and we went down to Ashland um, because my little sister-in-law is going to Southern Oregon University down there. And my mother-in-law took me to a yarn shop in Ashland. And you know, when in Rome, <laughs> when in Rome, go check out the Roman yarn shop. Okay, I mean, you know, you're traveling, why not go check out what they have in store. and. I was so glad I did. I thought, you know, you know, you go into one sh yarn shop, you've seen mostly all of them. Oh no, this yarn shop was called, I think it was called the Webster's. And I didn't have time to ask them exactly what that meant. It was kind of a little bit of variety. They had some things that for uh, spinning yarn and they had some things for weaving and, um, I don't think they had very much for sewing. I think uh, that was in a whole other separate shop for sewing and quilting. But they then like, I would say about like half their store was yarn and really nice yarn. Um, I couldn't even make my way around to peruse the whole thing because um, I got stuck in the Noro section. Um, yes. So, let's start with this one. This is Noro Kagayaki yarn, and it is a wool, cotton, silk, and viscose blend. Some interesting. Uh, doesn't really have a very creative colorway. The colorway is, let's see here, the colorway is mauve slash red slash mint. And that's kind of what it is. Um, but when I saw these colors, it spoke to me as yarn often does. And it spoke to me and made me think of a certain person in my life that I'll be making presents for this Christmas. So I'm thinking that this would make a super cute hat, especially for, um, you know, someone who's a little hipster-ish. So that is super fun. So I found this Noro. And then I moved on to the other Noro section of the shop. Let me grab the, that stuff. Okay, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so this is Noro, but it is Noro in Nishiki. And it does have a fabulous, fun color name colorway name and this one is called Sundance. Um, this is a 77% cotton, 23% polyamide blend. It's nice and soft and cozy. That cotton just feels really nice and these colors, I hope you can see reds and orange and yellow, a little bit of pink. Super, super fun. Um, like I said, I got caught up in the Noro section. These bright colors just had me captivated. And so I got several of them. And I think I'll be making several hats out of these to give as gifts for Christmas. I guess you could say this Noro yarn was like potato chip yarn for me. Uh, once you pop, you can't stop. Like once I got the one started looking at the other colors I just couldn't stop so the next Nishiki from Noro is this one in the colorway Borealis this one's really fun some purples and yellows a little bit of greens oh my gosh oh my gosh I just can't even um, yeah so that is the Borealis colorway and next is the 
Dreamcatcher colorway, also in the Nishiki. How fun is this? Lots of blues with a little bit of yellows and orange, a little bit of purple in there, smidge of green. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I think that I'm going to be knitting these up in the, um, the hat uh, pattern um, called the Gram, which is on Ravelry for free. I think that might end up looking really cute. So I've got the three of these Noro yarns for three different people. And you know what? I figured one wonderful stash of yarn deserves, you know, one good splurge deserves another and I deserve some too. So this one is going to be for me because it has the most pink in it. It's called Rhapsody and I really like pink. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, this speaks to me. I think I would totally rock this as like a snow hat. Maybe the gram with like a, a nice um, brim, a pom-pom on top. I could see it. I don't know if I would want the pom-pom to be the actual colorway um, itself or maybe just like a faux fur brown pom-pom on top. I feel like I could see that too. Um, but oh my gosh, uh, yeah, this is nice. And I cannot wait. I uh, really might have enjoyed casting on one of these to see how it would have started to look. But I really wanted to show you guys these in their original skeins and how they look there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, these, I just, yeah. So... I didn't get to experience all the varieties of yarn in that shop because I was mostly stuck in the Noro section, just loving on those. And I thought, oh my gosh, okay, that's way too much money after I especially said that I wouldn't spend any more money on yarn. I gotta stop, I gotta stop. But then my eyes caught some other yarn. I... I mean, I pretty much had heart palpitations when I saw this yarn and I could not leave without it. This is Madeline Tosh. Uh, Madeline Tosh, I think, let's see here. Tosh Merino Light plus Hollow Glitter. Yeah, glitter. Not just glitter, hollow glitter, <laughs> hollow glitter, I can't talk. Um, if you can see it, it's got that glittery stuff that's kind of reflective, uh, changes a little bit of colors in the light um, that you would call this like hologram color glitter. And I mean, the yarn itself is already gorgeous. It's like this wine red cranberry color. This um, is actually called Poison. <laughs> it is poison to my wallet, okay, because uh, I could not do without this. Um, and sparkles, you guys. Sparkles. I just can't hardly even. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And I just was so in love with this but this next one takes a cake. I uh, saved the best for last. This is the same thing, the Madeline Tosh Merino Light plus Hollow Glitter. This is called Copper Pink. Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. It is amazing. I really hope that the camera can catch these different tones of pink and with the little speckles, speckles and sparkles and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. This has to be for me. Um, this other one, I think I may make something out of this for someone else special. Also with a faux fur brown pom-pom, I think would look really good on this. 
and this. I mean, I guess you can't really go wrong with a brown faux fur pom-pom. But, um, oh, and then I was thinking if I have extra, if I make a hat out of this and a separate hat out of this, and then I have extra, I could combine the two and do something like with some color work with the two of these sparkly pinks, reds and pinks. One's red, one's pink. Anyways, oh my gosh. Yeah, so that is my newest yarn acquisition. I guess I just can't hardly help myself while I'm waiting for yarn to arrive in the mail. But um, I really should try to control myself a little bit. Um, anyways, that is all for this week. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. That would be lovely if you would. Um, I really hope you guys have a great week. This is Thanksgiving week. Um, and you know, take some time to be thankful, thankful for what you have, um, and what you're doing and, um, you know, all the good things in life. And if you are working on something that's not making you happy, scrap it, do something else, do what makes you happy. Anyways, so thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.